Hey guys, I wanted to do a little rolling video with you because uh, I need to roll stuff out. So I have my two current favorite toys. Um, I go back and forth between some. I have a big green bumpy roller that I use sometimes, but it just depends on my mood. Sometimes I can't get through class without this roller or I can't get through class without my spiky ball or I can't you know, I can't go to bed before I've rolled out with my big green roller. So my current favorites are these two. Um, I was using a rubs ball, R-U-B-Z, and they're green. This one is called Add-A-Day, A-D-D-A-D-Y, and it's blue. <laughs> I got it at REI, but it's basically the same product. I didn't realize that these break down either. When I brought this one home, I compared it to my green one, and I realized the green one had become kind of mushy, because I use these on my feet, so I'm putting all my weight on it. I didn't realize they could break down, so you do need to replace these periodically. But it is, this one is hard, like, it's, it's solid. It's not giving at all to my hand. And then this is a simple roller, and I sell these at chevaldancewear.com. I am still kind of messing with the different sizes. It seems like for the two inches wide, this one foot length is optimal. I also had a two foot length, but that was like too much. It was too much to carry around in a dance bag. And then to get kind of smaller, kind of where this guy would go, I have a one inch diameter that's smaller, but when it was this short, it just felt like it was too small. So I think what we're gonna do is cut down to, if you want two inches, it's gonna be short, otherwise it's like a weapon almost. But then if you want the one inch one, it's gonna be a little bit longer. And I don't have that one with me today, but I'm gonna just do a little bit with this one. This is, this is my favorite one. This is the one I use the most. So we're gonna start with the feet and kind of work upwards. My head's probably gonna go out of frame, but I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time here. Okay, this is good for two feet. Do hold onto a bar. Don't do this without a bar because unless you have really amazing balance, you will fall over. I'm just going along the bottoms here. You can kind of support it with this foot and really dig into the other foot. So this foot's getting more of a stretch and this foot's just kind of steering. I don't know if you can hear the crunching sound that's happening, but it's really good. I'm supporting it with my black socked foot. I'm just kind of stretching the toes out on top. It's kind of the same thing like that toe stretch. So you don't really need the roller for this one, but you can use it. Switch, just get a little bit of a stretch. So once I've done kind of this initial roll, I like to get a little bit more violent. This guy's just a little bit more pinpointed. And I also like that I can kind of go back and forth here and kind of play my toes back and forth in this fan shape. Really get these open. And then same thing, just really pinpoint all that tightness at the top and the bottom of that big fascia that goes down the middle of your foot. It's really nice to get into the meat of the heel as well. I don't know if you've ever had achy heels after a class. We shouldn't be sitting back in our heels during rehearsal or class, but sometimes those, those will just ache. So just really getting the bottoms of the feet really thoroughly and deep into the arch. Then this one too, kind of stretch the toes. My sock is helping me grip the ball a little bit. I'm just stretching my toes up. Basically just doing an isolated version again of this one. It's 
especially getting into the big toe. If the big toe doesn't have flexibility from the bottom of the foot, it can really hinder your ability to get onto a high releve. So that's a good place to stretch out if your releve doesn't feel as high. is an, an easy place to get to. Oh, that's always a risk. Okay, it's time to switch feet. I could spend all day on just one foot. Again, I'm just getting into the top, just fanning the toes back and forth over the ball. You don't have to use a spiky ball. Pinky balls are great. I just have enough stuff going on in my feet that I really need the most extreme version. I also do this with a golf ball, but I feel like the spikes on the rubs ball or this kind of ball, I feel like they help me grip it and then really get into the little tiny muscle fibers. I like to do it with a sock also to kind of protect my skin, but you don't have to. I do recommend a sock over a ballet slipper just because the leather will not let it get all the way into your feet. If you're taking class and you have your shoes on and you're just doing this a little bit between combinations, that's probably okay. But if you really want to get thorough, I suggest a sock. And they don't even have to match. side for a second. Now I'm going to focus on the muscles on the outside of my foot. Those can get really tight. Just put this down and then I'm going to add a little bit of pressure with my hands. Just massage the side of my foot, side of my heel, side of my ankle. Um, the rollers that you kind of hold on to, kind of like a rolling pin, this is a simplified version of that. That's why I call this a simple roller. And honestly, this is just a piece of wood I went and bought, and then I chop it up. But if you go order one from my website, you will be supporting my dancing and helping me pay for my point shoes, and also supporting my point shoe scholarship that Cheval Dancewear does for kids who come to Salt Lake City to study with Ballet West. I pick one student every year. This will be my third year coming up to uh, sponsor their shoes for the summer. So go buy a roller. Um, it won't be nasty like this one. I'll have it all nice and polished up for you. And it will have our logo stamped on it. This one's just been in my bag. I was experimenting with different ways of putting a stamp on. This is one of the first ones I made. Still works great. It has little dings in it, but you know, it's just old and beloved, so go pick one up. But they can do the same thing as those rolling pin type rollers. And I would argue you maybe have a little bit more control even, like I can find 
those little achy spots on the side of my shin and really press into it with this kind of rocking motion. And even on the side here, I can kind of get into the, start to get into the meat of my calf. You can also just lay it down this way. Put a little pressure on with your hand. Sometimes the heat helps. Do the top of the thigh, top and side, I guess. This is kind of warming it up. We're going to get a little bit more aggressive in just a bit. Give me a little bit of your inside too. Okay, this is the rollout that inspired the simple roller. I was at a yoga class and we took a yoga blanket rolled up and we stuck it behind our knees. And then you just lean back and it's, it's a very intense feeling, but it's your calf and your hamstring. And as a dancer, I'm kind of trying to keep my ankles together so I'm not stretching too much into my sickle. But wow, just hanging out here for a second. With the skinnier roller that's longer, I'll kind of get in there and I'll rock it back and forth, but I'm just going to sit here for just a second and just enjoy this incredibly stretchy pain. Now I'm going to go individually on this calf and make sure this is nice and tight up in my knee and just lean back. And now I can kind of do that rocking I was talking about back and forth this way or side to side. And just find different parts of the muscle. And then I roll back about an inch and go a little bit further. If you've got a nice long time, you can spend a good half hour with your roller. It just feels really good. You sit back and get into your hamstring a little bit again.
I'm now getting off the meat of the muscle. I'm going to be getting into this place where my Achilles goes, reaches down into my heel. And that feels really good to press on too. Just kind of get it to relax, release just a little. And you're in control of how much weight you're putting on it. I can back off. Or here with my elbows locked, I'm really leaning a lot of my chest weight into it. And you just roll down inch by inch. Okay, I'm now in the crook of my heel here. And I'm gonna kind of press along from the top of the heel down into the deepest part of the bend there. So kind of getting a little massage on the heel, trying not to do it too violently. Oh. <laughs> I don't think there's ever a point where this would not be painful. But it's a really nice release. Okay. On the leg, tuck this way up in the knee. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You could start at the bottom and work your way to the top. This is just the way I found to do it. And really this would work with any roller or any kind of stick or even an actual rolling pin. really bad knot right here. So I'm going to hang out for just a second. So I've kind of started just taking 10 to 15 seconds before each time that I move. So a little move, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, another little roll, countdown. It's a more sore spot, you can spend more time there. If it's less sore, still spend time there if it feels good, or go on. down into the Achilles again. This guy's extra sore on this side. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna work into that crook one more time, just under the heel. You can get a yoga block 
then stick it up under here to keep the heel flat. I am trying to get my talus to stretch out a little bit more, so I'm not doing that today. But if this is painful, prop your foot up on a yoga block so it can flex, and then you can work this way. And you can actually take another opportunity to do your foot here. Okay, next we're gonna go to the top of the thigh. So be really gentle here. If you're not ready for something this hard, get a softer roller. I've been rolling for a while and these muscles are really tight and they're quite developed. I've actually overdeveloped my upper thigh as a dancer. So I want these rolled out and I want to be pretty aggressive, but you don't have to, you know, go crazy. Do what your body needs. So I'm gonna control the amount of weight that is on my thigh and on the roller with this leg over here and my elbows. And I've heard that, it, I think it's called tacking. So I'm gonna find a meaty part of the muscle and then I'm gonna bend and straighten my leg. Especially if you find a sore spot. I kind of started in the middle, so I'm gonna work my way up and then I'm gonna work my way back down closer to my knee. Here's a spot. Oh. Someone in another video called them opera spots because they make you sing. Ah. But there's a reason I dance and don't sing other than for church. <laughs> so I'm not a great vocalist. I'm gonna let this knee go out or my foot go out to the side a little bit. Just kind of get different angles on the muscle. I can take some of the pressure off by lowering this hip, or I can add it back in. Careful you don't want to go all the way onto your knee joint, obviously. Your body should tell you that that's painful, don't do it. My head might be going out of frame, sorry about that. And you can do an overall just long roll too. You're just supported on this other knee. While I'm on this side, I'm gonna take a second and go into my hip. So I'm gonna put the roller at a slight angle and put it just under my hip bone. And there are all kinds of little things you can find in there around your psoads. We'll get at these from the back too, in just a bit. Oh, there's a spot. <laughs> just gonna hang on to that for just a second. This is the kind of thing where I wish I had the discipline and the time to do it every day, but maybe twice or three times a week would be good, or at least 
after you've had a really intense rehearsal or a class. Have a nice hot bath so your muscles are warm and relaxed. Keep some warm clothes on, at least this time of year. And then just roll everything out. Okay, I'm going to do thigh number two. I'm going to keep this angle so you can see what I was talking about supporting over here. Again, I've flattened the roller out so it's not at an angle anymore. It's back to being square with my body. You can do kind of just a preliminary roll, see where you might have a knot or two. Okay, we'll start at the top this time. We'll just tack on those muscles. And pick my hip up just a little bit to get a different angle or drop it down to get more of my inner thigh. So just know you've got to control out here. Another way you can control where you're rolling. If I lift it up more, I get closer to my IT band on the outside of my leg. I can keep this knee on the floor for less weight on the roller or I can pick it up for more pressure on the roller. And of course you can do this with any roller you have. I'll probably do something similar with my green bumpy roller that's slightly softer a little bit later. I'm getting a little bit of an upper body workout too, just supporting my body weight. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, I'm gonna go up into this hip. Bring the in, uh, roller up and put it at a slight angle. Put it just under the hip bone. You can also go above the hip bone. You're just feeling around all those little connectors. It's actually very complicated how our leg is attached to our pelvis. If you just take a minute and look at some of those muscles and all the different ways they connect. Really complicated stuff. And then as dancers, we ask all those crazy muscles to do crazy, crazy things. So it's good to really get in there and try and take care of them. or whatever kind of athlete you are. There's a spot. Kind of started to work into the side here actually, which can take us all the way over to the back. And this is my current favorite place to roll out. So just find where your sits bones are. 
And then I'm just going to start out with the meaty part of my muscle. And just sit on this thing. Adjust the angle wherever you need it. You're definitely going to find stuff back here if you do ballet once a week or, you know, six hours a day. You will find things out here to take care of. These are our ballet muscles, these big ones at the back. My friends and I call the piriformis the small angry one. It's the one tiny muscle. It seems like it's just the one all by itself that's responsible for helping us turn out. I think, I need to check this, but I think it's like just the size of your hand. It's not very big, but we sure ask it to do a lot of work. So here we're definitely working on the back part of the body, but I can go on the side here. And if you think about the shape of the pelvis, the bone, there are a lot of places, a lot of hollows that are just filled with muscles and fascia and nerves. So think about the shape of your bone and how you can really get into the muscles that might give a little bit more, really get deep in on those. So with this roller, I do kind of a preliminary loosening up, but I'm tight enough right here I'm actually going to get my spiky ball back. Especially on this side. I had really intense sciatic pain about 18 months ago and it took a lot of massage and rolling to get it to go away. I couldn't really do arabesque. I would do tondu to the back and then I couldn't lift my toe off the floor or I would just get shooting pains all the way up my back. So part of preventing that is keeping everything in the back, down the glutes, this connector between the body and the leg, and then all the way down here. It's keeping that loose. I had just let things get so, so tight. And I know you can't see my little ball, but he's in there. And get a slightly different stretch and roll. I'm going to cross this leg over. Wow! Whew. And then I'm putting quite a bit of weight on it, trying to monitor a little bit with my arms. But yeah, now I've got it in kind of a stretch position. I can get a little bit deeper in some areas. Find your sits bone again, that little bone you feel when you're sitting up on the floor. And you can massage all the little things that connect to that. Should feel really good. Oh, there's a spot. Oh, I found a knot. I can feel it flipping back and forth over the ball. It's kind of gross. <laughs> It'll be good to get rid of it. I have noticed that after I do this, my legs will go higher and I can extend higher. I can extend higher and kick higher because things aren't so tight for about three or four days or three or four classes. And that's how long it takes for things to tighten back up again. So really, I have to be doing this two or three times a week. I just found my sits bone again. I'm just kind of going in circles around the little knob of it. Okay. You might not need as much time on this as I do, or you might want to spend longer somewhere. Just go ahead and speed this up, pause it, slow it down, skip it all together. I'm going to start with a softer tool for just a minute, and then we'll go on to the more harsh one. Kind of like when you're sanding something down, you start with a rough sandpaper and then a finer and finer one. So you get it very smooth, very thorough.
I don't know if you can see out the windows because it's so bright, but the snow's coming down again. And this time it's in these nice big flakes. I had a contortionist teacher tell me that if you really want to be able to stretch a muscle, you stretch it and then you roll it in that stretched position. So I'm trying to extend my hip here the way I would with maybe this kind of stretch or this kind of stretch and then roll it out in that stretch pose. Down the nerve. I can feel tingling all the way up into my foot. Just where it's tightened up. You can also use your spiky ball on the front. I'm going to go back to this hip just for a second where that was really tight. Okay, working our way up. So this is I know I keep saying this, but I just don't want anyone to get back bruises. I'm going to put it just right here. I have bruised my own back, so be really careful. I'm supporting it with my thumbs so I can kind of get myself up on it. I'm just getting the top of those hips in the back. I would suggest a much softer roller if you're going to do, well, you can kind of do the stretches over this one. You do need a fatter one if you're going to stretch the back. So now we're going to do the upper back and we're going to keep the arms crossed here so that we stay on the fleshy muscles right here by the scapula. I don't want you to jam your scapula into it and I don't want you to jam the sensitive spine into it. So we're going to keep the upper back rounded. If you're a very bony person, Get a softer roller for this one. I have plenty of padding back there, so I'm just gonna do my upper back just a little bit, but do be really careful with this one. I'm gonna go ahead and place my back on it. This is not that comfortable. I've got bones running into it. Then cross this, and you should just have the fatty, um, muscular, woo, rounded part of your back. Now this is really intense, so you'd skip this part. Okay, making sure I have lots of my weight heels. Keep this rounded, keep your head up. And you can lean from side to side so you're not directly on your spine. Be really careful as you're transitioning side to side that you're not jamming those little bones in. But this is pretty intense. Oh, see, I could just, I could feel it going past my scapula there, so just be very careful. This is also putting quite a bit of tension on my neck, so I'm not going to spend a long time here. Ooh. Okay, now I need my slightly softer green bumpy roller for that. Also, this one is a little too skinny for my neck, 
So I'm just I'm pulling this way and then relaxing my neck onto it. So my arms are engaged, but I'm just getting a little bit of massage on those very top neck muscles. Make sure my head stays relaxed. I'm not trying to pick my head up. I'm letting it go back. You can also kind of do this manually. If you've ever had a massage therapist or someone just run their knuckles down the side and it feels so good, just be careful of your own pressure points. If you feel something that's painful, instead of just massage full, stop. Don't massage, don't press into your pressure points. A little bit awkward to do on yourself. But it can still feel nice. I've had trouble with my pecs being really tight, so I've been experimenting with different ways of loosening those out. So I'm going to sit up tall, try and relax this side of my body, even though I'm going to be using this arm. I'm just going to press into this, that muscle right here, connecting into the shoulder. My shoulders tend to sit forward, and then even if I put them back, they're angled the wrong way. So getting my pecs to loosen up has been something that's helped me a lot. Again, just be careful you don't run into your collarbone or hurt something. Okay, I think that's it for my simple roller and my spiky ball. If you have one of these and you found some kind of roll or stretch that I didn't get to today or that I don't know about, please let me know, that'd be really cool. My email is in the description box, Cheval Dancewear. You can leave me a message in the comments, but let me know what you did. Or if you have some other rolly massage toy that you just love and you want to share about it. That would be really cool too. I'm always looking for new little things. So I hope you guys have a good day and I'll see you later.